स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया which takes into account all these ideas that I have just discussed. So, the example that I have in this case is that of the beam mechanics. So, we consider a beam or an or a steel rod which is able to which is flexible and the beam is of uh, the beam is of length L, it is of length L and uniform cross section, uniform cross section, the beam is of length L and uniform cross section. Let my function y from 0 to L, from 0 to L to R describe the shape, the shape of the beam. and let us say that rho from 0 to L to R is the load is the load per unit length. Okay? Or the mass per or the load per unit length which is acting on the beam. Right? So, so then in that case the shape of the beam is governed by the functional which minimizes the energy of the beam right now so so it turns out that the shape of the beam of beam y of x is such that the energy the energy functional jy is minimum the shape is such that the energy functional is minimum right and the energy of the beam in general will be given by its sum of elastic energy plus the potential energy right we are ignoring the effect of uh, of the weight here okay so so the elastic energy of the beam in the most simple notation could be written as a constant let me call this as kappa times y double prime square by 2 dx minus 0 to l rho y dy right so so my variable here is y here so rho y dy okay so where where this quantity in the integral is my bending energy bending or elastic energy of the beam and this quantity here is my potential energy of the beam, potential energy, right. Okay. The potential energy or well potential energy of the beam due to the load that is acting on the beam. Okay. So, then uh, we need to find the optimal shape of the beam. The optimal shape is such that it is going to first satisfy the Euler Poisson equation. So, so, my Euler Poisson equation for this uh, functional reduces to this ODE, y fourth derivative with respect to x is rho of, well rho, rho by kappa, right. Let me call this equation as A. And uh, once we integrate from here, we integrate, we integrate a, I am going to get that y is equal to y of x is p of x plus a uh, set of 4 constants. Okay. Where, where my fourth derivative of p of x is nothing but rho by k kappa. Right? Okay. So, then 
Well, this question is how about the other constants? The other constants can be found by our four natural boundary conditions that we had just de derived C0 to C3. Okay. Now, to look at, I am going to consider the different cases of these uh, bent beam problems, but to look at that, uh, let me introduce some notations in solid mechanics. So, we introduce certain physical terms or notation in uh, solid mechanics. We introduce the term total force. So, the total force is defined as F is the integral from 0 to L rho d x right and this is also equal to from this is from A this is also equal to integral from 0 to x y fourth derivative kappa times y fourth derivatives of d x right. Okay. So, then what have I got? From here I can uh, I can certainly integrate this. This is an exact differential. You see that this is also equal to kappa y third derivative at L minus y third derivative at 0. Right? So, this is my so this is my total force. Right? So, where these quantities here are known as the reaction forces the reaction forces uh, uh, on the beam at x equal to 0 and L. So, 0 this quantity and at L that quantity. Okay. So, I must say that L comma 0. Okay. So, then also I introduce another term known as the moments, right? moments as well as torque or torque by the force by the force the force above that we had just described. Okay, I call these moments, I denote them as m. right? So, the moments are denoted by m, where m is integral 0 to l x times rho d x. Right? Or this is from a, I get that this is also equal to kappa times integral x x y fourth derivative d x from x 0 to x 1, right? well from 0 to l. Okay, so, I see that this is also equal to kappa of we, we do the integration by parts and we are going to come to a fact that this is also equal to l times y triple prime at l minus y double prime at l plus y double prime at 0. Right? Well, again we have this time we have these quantities as my reaction forces, reaction forces and this quantity is the moment, the moment produced by the reaction forces, produced by the reaction forces. Okay. So, then let us now look at uh, some special cases of these beam problems, uh, namely the different examples where the beams are either clamped or freely moving. So, let us look at the simplest case. The first case we can have a beam which is doubly clamped or the beam is clamped at x equal to at x 0 and at x 1. So, which means that we have a fixed fixed boundary at x 0 and x 1. So, this is this is my standard fixed point boundary condition problem. Let us say we have the boundary condition of the form. So, let us say x 0 is 0 and x 1 is L. So, y prime 0 is equal to y of 0. So, the y coordinate as well as its slope at 0 is equal to the y coordinate as well as its slope at L is equal to 0. So, this is the standard. We approach in a standard Euler Poisson setup with no with only fixed point boundary conditions. Then we could also look at 
So, that is already been done quite a few times. The second case we have in mind is the cantilever problem. Cantilever case where the beam, where we have a beam, let us say this is my horizontal, the beam is, is able to bend at one of the end points, right. So, this is my fixed boundary here. So, at x 0 equal to 0, the beam is fixed as well as its slope is defined, but on the other end at x 1 equal to l, it is free to move, right. So, it means this is a situation where the beam is clamped, the beam is clamped at x equal to 0 or I have that y of 0 is equal to y prime 0 is equal to 0, right. So, then well, so these are my two boundary conditions, the fixed point conditions and my other two boundary conditions at x equal to l are my natural conditions or at x 1 equal to l, I have, I have the natural condition, we impose the natural boundary condition that well, I have del f del y double prime. Let us go back a few slides. We have the natural boundary conditions which are these, these two quantities at x 1, right. So, at x 1, I have uh, del f del y double prime and f, well, what is f? f is my quantity which is, which is kappa y double prime square by 2 minus rho y, right. So, my, my function f, the integrand is kappa by 2 y double prime square minus rho of y, right. So, this is my quantity f. So, partial f partial y double prime is equal to, is equal to kappa times y double prime evaluated at, this is the condition only imposed at x equal to l, right. So, I get that kappa of y double prime l, this is equal to 0, right. So, there is no, no reaction moment at x equal to 0, right. And then we also have uh, the other boundary condition being satisfied at x equal to l, which is uh, d d x of partial f partial x y double prime minus partial f partial y prime at x 1 equal to l, which is also equal to uh, kappa times y triple prime at x equal to l, which is set equal to 0 here. Okay. So, this one is my reaction force. Okay. So, these are my reaction force. Okay. So, then we now have four boundary conditions and the problem now is fully defined. So, let us continue on a, with another case. Suppose we are given a beam which is just supported over a particular uh, support. right? So, suppose we have a setup that if a beam is, let us say this is my point x 0 which is 0 and this is my point x 1 which is L and suppose I have a beam which is let us say supported at these two points, then this question is how are we going to find the extremal shape of this beam. So, again, so the case is simply supported beam. So, how to approach? For simply supported beam, uh, we will certainly have that the fixed point condition y at 0 and at y at l, they are set equal to 0. So, certainly we have two fixed point conditions. So, two fixed point conditions given by y of 0 equal to y at l is equal to 0. However, note that in this case the slope may not be 0 because it is just a simply supported beam case. So, for the slope we are going to, instead of the fixed slope, we are going to use the natural boundary condition for the 
uh, for uh, to determine the slope at these end points. So, the natural boundary condition uh, would be well to would be that the reaction moments and the reaction forces are set equal to 0. So, so we have the following. So, for slope at the end points to specify the slope at the end points we instead replace with these two conditions. Uh, we have uh, partial f partial y the first set of condition out of the the, the four at x naught and x 1 this is equal to 0 right. So, so those are my those are my set of four boundary conditions for simply supported case. Then finally, we could also include a case which is the unsupported beam. Uh, the unsupported beam is where the neither the position. So, unsupported case where neither position neither position nor nor the slope neither position nor the slope is specified right neither position nor the slope is specified. Uh, so, in that case we can use all sets of four natural boundary condition. So, use all four natural boundary condition which are my uh, which are the following we have the reaction uh, the reaction moments set equal to 0. So, the double primes are my reaction moments y double prime y at 0 and l is 0 that comes right from this this set of condition here right and my reaction forces are also 0. Okay. So, those are my four sets of natural boundary condition and that will complete our problem description. Okay, finally, we have one more case and we will see that this is not solvable by the model that we have just described. The case that I have is uh, with a beam having only one end point fixed, one end point fixed, but not clamped, but not clamped. Right. So, what is this scenario? We have a, a beam, let us say the beam is has one end point fixed. So, x 0 equal to 0 has a fixed coordinate y 0, but, but uh, the beam the slope of the beam at this point is not defined. So, so in this case y prime at x 0 also is unknown. Right. So, what, what should we expect that the beams, uh, what would be the optimal shape of the beam in this case? Well, the beam is free to move except that the position is fixed at one point. So, the physics tells us that the beam will, will just lie into a configuration which is parallel to the wall or to reduce the total energy of the beam and this is a case where where uh, the model has failed. The model cannot justify this configuration of the beam. It is purely coming out of the physics. right? So, the model fails here because the beam collapses, collapses and lies vertical. The beam collapses and lies vertical. So, there is no solution. right? Okay, so, let us look at another example. Uh, so, to do to consider another example, we need to revisit our assumption on the elastic energy of the beam. So, so let us reconsider our our beam example and specially the elastic energy the elastic energy of the beam in our beam problem. Notice that the elastic energy that we have chosen was of the following form kappa times y double prime square d x right, where 
kappa was assumed to be a constant, right. So, this was our elastic energy of the beam, but this is when, when the slope, when the beam bends, the bending of the beam is negligibly small. This is true, this is true only, only when the slope is very small, right. Uh, we will, so we will see once we derive the general, well, so this is nothing but the curvature of the beam. The curvature decides the elastic energy, right. We will see that when we derive the general expression for the curvature, in general the curvature depends on the slope of the shape of the beam, right. And it again reduces to this following form when the slope of the beam is very small, right. So, so in general, So, in general, I have kappa of s, kappa of s is the line curvature or the curvature of the, the curve of our interest and this is also equal to the magnitude, the magnitude of the rate, the magnitude of the rate at which, the magnitude of the rate at which the tangent the tangent of the arc length changes, the tangent of the arc length changes direction, right. So, it is also the magnitude of the rate at which the tangent of the arc length changes direction, ok. So, what exactly is kappa of s? So, kappa of s is the magnitude of the rate of change of the tangent, the rate at which the tangent changes. So, the tangent of the curve is given by r dot of s and the rate at which tangent changes is r double dot of s and its magnitude, right. So, this is nothing but, so in 2D, so in 2D, this is nothing but the magnitude of x double dot comma y double dot of s, where the double dot is of course, the derivative of the quantity with respect to the independent variable s, s being the arc length or this is also the magnitude is also equal to the square root of x dot square plus y double dot square, ok. So, where we define, where we define my dot to be the derivative with respect to the variable s or the arc length. Now, we need to describe all these derivatives x double dot and y double dot. Notice that Note that my arc length, my arc length of the curve d s will be such that this is also equal to d x square plus d y square, right. So, my d s square is d x square plus d y square or I get that, I get that d x, d s d x whole square is equal to 1 plus y prime square, right. From here I get that d s d x is equal to square root of 1 plus y prime square. From here I also get that d x d s is 1 by square root of 1 plus y prime square, right. Okay. So, what we have is the following. So, we have found out the relation uh, so, we have found out the expression for the derivative of s x with respect to s or x dot. So, this is also equal to my x dot of s. So, from here I can find x double dot by differentiating this quantity one more time. So, my x double dot of s is the derivative of x dot with respect to s. I can do a chain rule that this is also equal to the derivative of derivative of x with re, derivative of x dot with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to s ok or this is also equal to so this quantity is x dot of s times the derivative of x dot with respect to x is going to give me so well x dot was this quantity. So, I am going to differentiate this quantity, I get that 
this is also equal to x dot prime where the prime denotes the derivative with respect to x right so i get that this is also equal to x dot is 1 plus y prime square under the root and the second one is the derivative of this quantity okay or after simplification i get that this is also equal to minus y prime y double prime divided by 1 plus y prime square whole square okay so similarly similarly i can find y double dot of s right how should we do that we know that we know that what do we know we know this following relation we know that from here i know that x dot square plus y dot square is equal to 1 right you can divide throughout by s okay so from here i can find y dot and y dot turns out to be so we know that x dot square plus y dot square is equal to 1 we on, already know x dot we plug it and we find that we find that y dot of s comes out to be y prime divided by square root of 1 plus y prime square okay so y double dot of s again using chain rule will be will be x dot of s times y dot of s the prime now the prime is nothing but the derivative with respect to x okay so once we we substitute all these expressions i am going to get that finally y double dot of s is coming out to be uh, y double prime divided by square root well square root of well not square root y double prime divided by 1 plus y prime square of uh, well whole square okay so that is what we get okay so finally finally my curvature kappa of s is x double dot plus y double dot square plus y double dot square uh, let me call this as kappa square and then we use these two expressions that we have just derived to come to the conclusion that this turns out to be after plugging in all the values i get that this is also equal to y double prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 right or my curvature notice that my curvature now depends on the slope of the curve y prime and it reduces to y double prime square for when the slope is negligibly small okay right so so what have i said is the following for for small deflection for small deflection i have y prime equal to y double prime by 1 plus y prime square to the power 3 by 2 this is also equal to y double prime of 1 minus 3 by 2 y prime square plus order of y prime 4 right note that now my curvature my curvature uh, well so this is my curvature now so my kappa of s taking the square root of the previous result my curvature comes out to be y double prime plus some higher order terms which will vanish if the slope is small right so we are going to look at the class of beam problems from now in this lecture where we minimize the elastic energy and those class of beam problems with minimum elastic energy are known as elastica so we are going to look at the shape of elastica for a different setup so beam bent beam bent beams with minimum elastic minimum elastic energy 
are known as elastica are known as elastica well typical example is a thin uh, is a thin strip of metal which adopts a shape when forced to bend right a thin strip so example is a thin strip thin strip of elastic material material which adopts uh, so the shape so elastica is the shape it's the shape the shape of a thin strip of elastic material uh, which is adopted which is adopted when forced to bend forced to bend okay so we are going to look at two examples of elastica so the elastica 